Today on Retro Bassin, learn how a divine coin flip forever changed the future of bass fishing. Tails. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. From the lakes of northern Canada to the Gulf of Mexico, wherever fish are biting, that's where we're gonna go. There's a lot of exciting country just waiting to be explored. So join us now in the great outdoors world of Virgil Ward. Those are, of course, the words of the theme song from Championship Fishing with Virgil Ward. And drop a comment in the comment section down below if you would like Tom Lamb to do a cover of that particular tune. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Consider subscribing and be sure to hit that bell icon. That way you'll know we post a new video like this one. So today on Retro Bassin, we are going to do an episode that I have been wanting to do for a little while now. I feel like I say that a lot, by the way. But I've had a number of requests over the past year and a half to do a show on this man, Mr. Virgil Ward. Before we dive in, though, I do need to uh, give a huge shout out and a giant thank you to outdoor writer Dan Galusha. Dan was personal friends with Virgil Ward and co-produced a great documentary on Virgil in 1999 called The World of Virgil Ward. So much of the information that you're going to hear in this episode, honestly, pretty much all the information you're going to hear in this episode came from that documentary. It is available in full length on Dan's YouTube channel called Dan's Fish and Tales, and I will drop a link to that down below, um, both in the comment section, I'll pin it, and I'll also put it um, in my description for the video. So I have to be honest with you, uh, championship fishing was a little bit before my time. But many of my childhood heroes uh, owe their careers to the man from Amsterdam, Missouri. So for one, Jimmy Houston uh, recounts Virgil taking him fishing when Jimmy was only 16 years old. And I also know that Al and Ron Linder personally owe the start of their fishing careers to a trip they took with Virgil Ward. And while his primary business was selling appliances in Amsterdam, Missouri, uh, Virgil and his son Bill founded the Bass Buster Lure Company in 1955. And they sold a number of different things. They started out with some wooden baits, which were very expensive to produce, but ultimately their first home run was the feather jig, which was lights out on bull shoals. Again, go back to that documentary. There's a great story about how um, Virgil almost accidentally got into selling feather jigs because they made a bunch for a trip and they were so effective that other folks wanted to buy them. Before eventually selling Bass Buster to the Johnson Wax Company, uh, Virgil and his son had a number of great contributions to the fishing lure industry. One of which, and I did not know this to be honest with you, was that Virgil invented and patented the fiber weed guard that we still use today. He also invented the Marabou jig and of course, the subject of today's episode, the Beetle Spin. Virgil was a master promoting his lure company through outdoor media uh, and was soon influencing the fishing masses through a column in 400 newspapers and a radio show on 200 stations. In a way, you could say that Virgil Ward was the first Guggen. But Virgil's number one accomplishment is definitely the television show Championship Fishing with Virgil Ward and the springboard for his TV show was winning the 1962 World Series of Sport Fishing. And in the documentary, there is a great story behind that win. In those days, the World Series of Fishing was a multi-lake, multi-species event, and different points were awarded to different species of fish. Prior to day one of the competition, Virgil was attempting to decide between targeting white bass or black bass. Now, black bass were worth more points. However, the conditions were particularly muddy on that lake, and most anglers in those situations at that time would have targeted white bass. 
So Virgil decided to lean on his faith and perhaps Lady Luck a little bit, and he made a coin toss. And he basically told God, he said, look, you let me know, am I going to go for white bass tomorrow or black bass? Heads, it was going to be white bass. Tails, it was going to be black bass. So he flipped a coin and it came up tails. Virgil said, you know, um, God, it's really muddy. I'm, I'm worried the, the black bass aren't going to be hitting. Let's do two out of three. And it came up tails two more times. Six coin tosses and all, all went tails for black bass. And Virgil knew that that's what he was going to pursue the next day. Well, long story short, Virgil ended up finding the black bass. He ended up winning the World Series of Sport Fishing and breaking the all-time points record. And that was the springboard for his television career. Now, after a brief stint at a local show in 1963, Virgil did launch Championship Fishing, and that would be nationally syndicated for over 25 years. But at Retro Bass, and we definitely bring the old school to the new school. And as you can see here, we've got a collection of new and vintage Bass Buster baits. We're going to go through those today. And then we are going to take some of these baits to the water with a couple of my fishing buddies and see if vintage Bass Buster baits still work today. So when you see this bait in the store, the Beetle Spin from Johnson, honestly, I never really realized how old and honestly old school this bait is. This is probably the oldest school bait that you can find in Bass Pro Shops. And honestly, I'll show you a couple different models, but it has not changed, honestly, barely at all over the years. These are still made, by the way, in Amsterdam, Missouri, I believe. But here's the new one that I just picked up pretty recently. Pretty simple bait, right? It's just a standard lead head, a single spinner on just a barrel swivel, and that really unique beetle body. By the way, I don't know if there's any truth to this, but this thing came out in the 19, you know, 60s or so around the same time of a very popular band. And I don't know if this thing was named after the Beatles or that just happens to be coincidence, but, but I like to think so. So here are some originals um, from Bass Buster with the old school logo. Check that dude out. And I don't know if you noticed, but um, when we were in Louisiana last week, they had some larger beetle spins, um, some of the bodies. That's what I was talking about. Um, this bait here, it is honestly bigger than most beetle spins that you see these days, but this one, I, the beetle spin I know is traditionally a panfish lure, but when you look at the size and profile of this bait, this definitely screams largemouth to me. But check out the art on this thing. Ah, oh, I love this package. It's got like the awesome logo <laughs> and just that cover art in the background. I mean, this was not made on like a computer. So Beetle Spin changed a little bit over the years. Here are some um, newer models. I think this is still prior to Johnson, I'm pretty sure. But that's more like an 80s package of the Beetle Spin. It came in some varieties that they do not make anymore. This is an even called the Heavy Head. And it's the same profile jig head, but twice as heavy to run a little bit deeper. I have not opened up any of these, but I think I might. So here is a chummy minnow from Bass Buster. This is a pretty cool line they had. Um, oh yeah. They had a lot of stuff that was fish flavored. This is the chum and rub, for example, I've got on my main display. It's like chapstick made of, you know, L.Y. oil. <laughs> but this bait, I'm definitely gonna be ripping this thing open. I'm pretty excited to fish this. It is a beetle spin with more of a um, bait fish profile. It's called the Bass Buster Chumming Minnow. Check that thing out. That totally looks like a largemouth bait. I'll show you the back and I might read it a little bit. There's the back of this thing. So what's it say? The Bass Buster Chummy Minnow. Uh, this is the lord you've seen fish eat on television. Probably on championship fishing. Um, the body is loaded with new improved flavor all. Ooh, I think I had that on Doritos once. 
Um, it's a lure that tastes alive. Tackle box, safe too. That's always good. Anybody ever seen like the worm just melt through the, uh, you know, <laughs> the bin on the tackle box? That's not good. How to fish the Bass Buster Chummy Minnow. Um, and it's super hard to read with sunglasses, by the way. I don't know why I ever made the decision to film with sunglasses, but I'm going to ride it out for a while. So how to fish the Bass Buster Chummy Minnow. Cast the Chummy Minnow to a rock ledge or a sunken timber and retrieve with a slow pumping motion. Uh, you'll see a kind of darting or diving that really attracts the fish. It will be one of your favorite lures for walleye, northern, crappie, brim, white bass, and stripers. Doesn't say largemouth, but that's what we're going to go with today. Um, very cool. That's a chum minnow from Bass Buster. Uh, I've also got this old school Bass Buster patch that I picked up. I have not affixed this to any sort of jersey or hat, but I think I might. Honestly, Johnson, y'all should really think about bringing back this logo. I love that. Look how old school awesome that is. Very cool. So I was digging through my old uh, collection of Bass Pro Shops catalogs. I've got my 1978 catalog here and I think there's a pretty sweet spread on Bass Buster that I'll show you guys. Okay, so here's my 1978 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog and a really prominent spread on the Bass Busters. So we've got the original beetle spin. Oh, check that out. A tandem beetle spin. I think that would totally work. Looks like the old school Bass Buster logo. Oh, look at that. Beetle spin with a fiber weed guard. I don't know if that's like totally necessary, um, but that's still pretty cool. And some really sweet colors here. Color 29 looks pretty money, doesn't it? That looks like almost like a natural, I don't know, funky thing. That's, that's nice. So over here we've got the uh, scorpion and tarantula. So this looks like the scorpion spinnerbait for $1.29. Looks like a uh, single spin, ball bearing and swivel, sort of a unique head there. And looks like, I don't know what kind of skirt that is, if that's living rubber or just sort of vinyl. And then here you've got the tarantula, which is uh, honestly a nice sparse skirt. A lot of spinnerbaits back in the day had a really sparse skirt. Uh, I kind of like that. Ball bearing swivel, and this one looks like a, a Colorado blade. And I don't know if you all can see it, but it actually says tarantula. Oh. And I mentioned that Bass Buster got their start, not necessarily with the beetle spin, but with the hair jigs. And here we've got a pack of, it's like a dealer card of Bass Buster hair razor jigs, designed and recommended by Virgil Ward, three-time uh, world and national fishing champion. I don't know how big these guys are. These look probably like a half an ounce or so. It's a purple hair jig. It's got a gold hook on it. Comes with a little worm. I don't see a fiber weed guard, which is sort of interesting. Um, manufactured by the Ward Company. Uh, originators of the famous Bass Buster line of lures, P.O. Box 118, Amsterdam, Missouri. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to be opening that. And last but not least, uh, in 1972, Virgil wrote this book, Championship Fishing Guide, with Virgil Ward, available for three bucks. Oh, we'll have to do a deep dive into this, but I have read this book cover to cover a couple times. Oh, it's pretty cool. And there's Mr. Virgil in his classic, iconic uh, glasses with a big old stringer of fish. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to throw some of these baits in the truck. I've got a pond just down the road that I've been hitting just a little bit lately. And I'm going to see if we can get a fish or two on some old school beetle spins. See you guys in a minute. Okay, we just got to one of my new favorite little lakes. Got my two fishing buds with me and I've got a couple rods rigged up with some old school Bass Buster Beetle Spin Lures. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we can get a fish or two out of this little pond. Um, we've got some different varieties of Bass Buster original baits. All of them old school. Some of them look eerily similar to the baits you can find today. Others are quite different. So. Let's get on it. Yeah. 
going fishing. Trying to catch some fish for who did it? Oh. Oh, sorry, something. Just seaweed. But seaweed means fish. And fish means seaweed. Thank you. He's gonna shake you off. He's gonna shake you off board. Can let go. Okay. Whoa. Wow, he came out of nowhere. Oh. Whenever that thing you said you're gonna if you catch a fish, you're gonna kiss it. Oh well. Catch a fish. You're sure you I'm it. gonna kiss that monster? Yeah, kiss it. Ugh. Oh, kiss that big monster. Oh uh, well. You kiss, I said I if was. you catch a fish on that lore. Tastes like sardines in a bottle that went over last time. Oh, so first of all, when he struck out of nowhere, I first fell in a pool, and then thunder, and then I saw him jump, and I was like, whoa! And then I started reeling in, and then he started, while I reel him in, he was jumping on the floor. Okay. You are done. Fishing! Wow. I can't believe we haven't caught one. Caught one. Caught fish. And I kissed it once. Was gross. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woo! -hoo. <laughs> yes. I caught a fish and it came out nowhere. So first I just had my rod, and then first I felt a jerk. And I was like, "Boo!" And then I reeled it up, and then and then I was jumping like crazy. Wow! I caught a fish. What's up, your stance? See that fish? Ew, he's all dirty. Pull him up. Oh my goodness. I think I'm like my thumb swimming through his skin. You gonna kiss him? No. No! I don't want to. He's disgusting. Okay. That's all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sticker fish you kissed yeah. me on. Why am I kissing fish today? Hold him up, Caroline. Let me see that fish. What? <laughs> Woo! I did it! It's the biggest bass I ever caught, largemouth bass I ever caught.
Oh, you got one! Whoa! Whalen! Awesome, Whalen! Wow, this is crazy. Can I caught a fish? I caught a fish. Come wow. On. First well, of all, I got to tell. A big... Um, no, that's just his... Is he bleeding? No, that's just his guts. But I felt a big bite, like, way far back, and I, and I kept on reeling and reeling until this guy came up. And... Okay. Song, fishy! Wow, that's slimy. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our really brief uh, foray into all things Virgil Ward. Rest assured we've got a lot more Virgil Ward in store on Retro Bass. So till next time, keep those beetles spinning. Fish and it old school! Fish it old school! Fish it old school. Fish it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.